let's face it, people aren't buying sedans anymore, especially not full-size luxury executive sedans. And if you plan on marketing one these days, good luck taking on the competition. The segment is currently dominated by the German car makers. You've got solid entries out there right now, things like the Audi A8, the BMW 7 Series and the Mercedes S-Class, arguably the best interpretation of a luxury limousine currently on sale. People don't really think about Lexus when they want to buy these cars, and that's a shame because Lexus currently sells this, the LS 500. It's properly massive, properly stylish, and one of the most luxurious cabins I have ever sat my ass into. Sadly, nobody buys these things. Last year in 2020 alone, Lexus only sold 21 LSs in Canada. In North America, Canada and the United States combined, we're talking about less than 4,000 units sold. From a business standpoint, there's absolutely no reason the Lexus LS should continue existing, but the fact that Lexus continues to offer it is a testament to its devotion of offering exclusivity, rare models, and one hell of an ownership experience. Let's go for a ride in this massively beautiful Japanese luxury sedan and explore all of the luxury features it has to offer and see if it still deserves to have the consumer's attention. Now the irony about the Lexus LS not being sold uh, in large quantities lies in the fact that this was Lexus's first vehicle that it sold in North America. Now the first LS really proved uh, that Lexus could manufacture a luxury vehicle. It, all, it was also a testament to Toyota's obsessive pursuit of perfection, reliability, and build quality. Those things were extremely reliable. Fast forward to today and the, the LS is still very much Toyota's flagship vehicle. You get a lot of technology in this vehicle that has still not trickled down in the rest of the Lexus or the Toyota lineup. For instance, the engine under the hood is a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. Now, I didn't even remember that exi that engine existed within Lexus's lineup because it's not available in any other of its vehicles. Normally, Toyota and Lexus will prefer uh, going down the naturally aspirated route for reliability reasons. Now, so far, this engine has proven really solid in the LS. I mean, obviously, not many vehicles are running on the road, but the people who have bought them, I've had absolutely no issues with this drivetrain, and it's properly powerful, too. It pumps out 414 horsepower and 443 foot-pounds of torque, and it's mated to a 10-speed automatic gearbox. Again, that transmission isn't shared with any other Lexus vehicle except for the LC500 Sports Coupe. This is rear-wheel drive bias, but here in Canada, it'll come standard with all-wheel drive. And right off the bat, as I'm driving it, it's a lot softer than what you'll get from the German competition. Now, that's where the LS kind of falls behind versus its rivals. It's nowhere near as powerful, as quick off the line, or as dynamic as a 7 Series, an S-Class, or an A8. Let me remind you that the 7 Series can be had with a twin turbocharged V12 engine that pumps out 600 horsepower. The LS is also absent of crucial technologies that you'd expect from these kinds of vehicles. There's no Wi-Fi hotspot, there's no wireless phone charging, no wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and unlike a BMW, I can't perfume the interior with bottles of perfume that I can insert in the glove compartment. However, where the LS totally pulverizes its European competition is in its luxury promise. This is by far one of the best built vehicles I have sat inside. The attention to detail, the overall experience and the presentation of this cabin is off the charts. The driving experience is also rather serene. It's very calm, very quiet. There's magnificent road composure. I can adjust the adaptive dampers using these drive mode buttons up here. I can cycle between comfort, sport, and sport plus. Now in sport plus mode, it's obviously not an athlete. It's not ex exactly precise nor dynamic, but when you gun it, there's a delay because it's turbocharged and there's a 10 speed transmission, but there's good power here. There's good torque. It's quick enough. It's not blisteringly quick like a BMW or an Audi, but it's still respectfully potent. And then there's 
the price tag, which is considerably lower than a German alternative. Now, the base price for a Lexus LS is just over $100,000. However, the one I'm driving has a $34,000 executive package. $34,000, that's the price of a brand new Volkswagen Golf GTI. But you do get a lot for that package. So fully loaded, this thing is 140 grand. By comparison, a Mercedes S-Class kicks off at $120,000 and it will quickly approach the $200,000 mark when you start adding optional equipment. This thing is fully loaded at $140,000, which makes it somewhat of a bargain in this category. But obviously driving dynamics are not what the Lexus LS500 are all about. What you guys want to know about is the technology, the gadgets, the luxury features that this vehicle has to offer. So I'm just going to park and explore with you the obsessive attention to detail that this vehicle has to offer. Okay, so what I want to begin with is the level of craftsmanship and the attention to detail in the Lexus LS. Let's begin with the door inserts. These are, this is obviously the busiest door insert I've ever seen fitted to an automobile. You like it or you don't. I absolutely love it because I find it has such a Japanese flair. I've got this glass texture here inside the door um, and it, it really reminds me of Japanese origami art. There's a machine aluminum door handle right here. It's absolutely beautiful and extremely enjoyable to touch. And I've got this folded material here inside the door insert. Look at this. It's 3D. It pops out. It looks absolutely marvelous. And I, I adore this kind of burgundy purple interior, which ironically matches the shorts I'm wearing right now. No, that was not done on purpose, but it really contrasts well with the silver exterior. It's very difficult to express on video how this Lexus feels inside, but everything you touch feels of immense quality. The textures are so smooth. The materials used have a lot of depth in them. There's stitching on the dashboard, the buttons, the dials, just the volume knob. It feels like I'm adjusting the volume in a very expensive electric guitar amp. There's so much depth in it. There's so much precision. And that's just the volume knob. Here on the gauge cluster, I have three separate gauge dials. I've got the center one, which is for my RPM and other information. And on each side, I've got the classic gasoline and engine temperature gauges. They're analog. However, in the center, it's digital and nothing lags. When I go from one drive mode to the next, there's no lag whatsoever. Everything is super fast and precise. The dashboard design continues with this origami Japanese style demeanor. There's a long metal strip that spans the dashboard with brushed aluminum as well. When I fiddle with the HVAC controls and the air vents, there's a smooth and springy feel in the button. It feels of utmost quality. I've never seen such attention to detail for such small details. And then there are the seats. Look how massive these seats are. And they include a wide variety of different options. They, they can be configured in every possible way. I can adjust my headrest. I can bolster the sides. I can ventilate it. I can heat it. I also have massaging technology. And onto the center console. I have a physical button right here to adjust the blind that's behind me. I can also manually adjust them on the side windows if I want to be properly cocooned and hidden from outside influence. This vehicle was really conceived for celebrities or very rich people or famous people that don't want to be spotted by the outside world. Finally, there's the infotainment system. And this is an interesting one because if you've watched recent reviews of Lexus vehicles on this channel, you've probably seen me complaining about the god awful Lexus trackpad infotainment system. Trackpads have never worked in infotainment systems. Up until recently, the only way you could operate a Lexus infotainment system was by using this silly little trackpad, which made absolutely no sense and was just absolutely irritating. It was just the worst. But now, however, Lexus has incorporated a touch feature. Finally, like any other vehicle on the market right now, I can use touch controls to navigate through the system and it's considerably better. Now, it's still cluttered with information. There's still a lot of complexity in the system, but at least I can get around the menus and the functionalities using touch controls. 
Finally, a very clever option on this system is the volume knob. Now, I talked about its tactility earlier, but what I didn't mention is that it acts both as a volume knob, but also a tuning knob. That's absolutely brilliant. Instead of reaching to the right for tuning or going through the menus for tuning, all I have to do is use the exact same button for my volume or to tune the channels. This way, Lexus fixes a problem that's common with all modern infotainment systems. It's the Apple way. Use one button for many functions. It's absolutely brilliant. But obviously, when you buy a Lexus LS, you're not gonna spend much of your time sitting in the front. Now, this section is usually reserved for your chauffeur, um, and you're spending most of your time in the rear because you're a very busy person and you have no time to waste. You need to get to your destinations in a hurry, and you need to get some work done as you get there. So I'm gonna sit in the back, I'm gonna have my chauffeur drive me around, and I'm gonna show you all the features the rear seat of a Lexus LS has to offer. So obviously when you're being chauffeured in a car like this, you wanna begin by making yourself as comfortable as possible. And the Lexus LS has all the tools to make sure that your ride is as smooth and stress-free as possible. Let's begin by adding a bit of privacy in here. Now I have a, an enormous center console right here in the center. This is something that the German brands also offer and I can control many options from this screen. I'll begin by closing the curtains to make sure that the peasants or the poor people don't see me inside my very expensive luxury sedan. Then what I want to do, I want to stretch my legs. I don't want to have a seat in front of me. I don't want to feel like I'm in a car. I want to feel like I'm in a living room. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that seat out of the way. To do this, I'm going to fiddle with this screen right here and I'm going to hit this button like that. And as you can see, the front seat is reclining. It is pushing itself all the way to the front of the car giving way to massive legroom. But this is not enough for me. I want my feet to be suspended in the air because I don't want to touch the very expensive carpets in my Japanese luxury sedan. So I'm going to give myself a bit of a footrest. Now using the massively complicated commands here, once again, I will select the front section of my seat and I will retract using the touch buttons right here, a footrest right here in front of me. Now I can lift it like that and I can move it forward as well for maximum extension and be a lot more comfortable. But that's not enough. I need more relaxation because I'm a very stressed business person and I need to get to my destination relaxed to make sure that I perform really well in my next business meeting. So I'm gonna recline my seat to go for a bit of a nap. So once again, I'm gonna pull it back like this. I'm gonna give it a bit of depth in the back as well. So far, could you go a bit faster please? There you go. And he's going pretty quickly right now. We're probably breaking the speed limit and being highly illegal, but I don't care because I'm enjoying the relaxation of the rear seat in the Lexus LS. Now let's see what else I've got back here. Now I'm gonna fiddle with the relaxation menu right here. Now what this is gonna do is give me access to a wide variety of different massaging technology. I think I'll go with full body refresh right here. And ooh, I am feeling it right now in my back. Uh, this is this is pretty neat. And I can just sit back here and enjoy either the road, the tremendously ugly face of my chauffeur, or a TV screen right in front of me. I've got two TV screens actually, and I can command them and control them directly from this console. I even have a Blu-ray player, which is handy if I wanna activate a movie as I'm being transported to my next and very important business meeting. And if I'm worried about what I look like, I can pop this little mirror right here and I can stare at my very important face for hours on end without being stressed the entire way. It's quite impressive what I can operate back here. I can actually operate everything in the vehicle. I can play with the vehicle's climate control settings in the front, in the rear, independently on both sides. I have what, they, what Lexus calls a four zone climate control setting. I can also activate the audio system and I can open the sunshades. Actually, I'm gonna do that. So while I am private on the sides and in the rear, I can make sure that the sun comes into my cabin and enjoy my relaxation experience. I will do it by pressing the button right here, like so. So the obvious question is, does the Lexus LS manage to beat the German sedans in terms of comfort and luxury? Well, I sat in the back of a BMW M760 Li as well as a Mercedes S-Class, and I can tell you that there's just as much space back here as in the German competition and just as much technology. So considering how much you're paying for this vehicle, $140,000 with all the packages, you're getting something rather executive 
for the price. Although I absolutely adore the Lexus LS500, I understand why consumers are not exactly buying this thing. The reliability argument doesn't really apply in a category of cars such as this one. Think about it, when people buy an executive sedan, they typically have a lot of money and the person driving them and bringing it to the dealership are their chauffeur. These people typically don't care about paying for maintenance bills. However, if you do happen to want to buy an LS500, you're not going to be disappointed. You'll have a fantastic machine in your possession, arguably the most reliable luxury sedan currently on sale. And I reckon that in 10, 20, even 25 years, this thing will be a future classic. <music>